Welcome to the Inferno Cast. Today's guest has a lifetime full of martial arts experience, but he's primarily known as a TV and film actor, and most notably his recent show, Hawaii Five-O. Alex Alonso. How you doing today, buddy? What's up, man? How you doing? Man, I'm good. I really appreciate you, you know, taking time to talk to me about some martial arts and jiu-jitsu. Um, it's kind of a unique time that we're in, but I think that's kind of why stuff like this is a little bit more important to kind of keep people engaged and encouraged. How's everything going on Hawaii? Or in Hawaii, sorry. Good, man. It's good. Thank you for having me, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to be here. And uh, you know, I love talking about martial arts. I always sort of have. I've been a geek on it since I was very little. And um, things are good here. It's hot. Yeah. Summer, summer is just sort of starting here. And it's, um, it's funny, for, you know, we never really get a winter for me yeah. anyway. Like I'm used to like rain or snow or wind or something. And it sort of just drops a few degrees but then it goes back up. So yeah. crown I'm just coming back. But it's good. It's beautiful. That's good, it. um, well, you, you mentioned you've been into martial arts since you were a kid. So I kind of wanted to start there. Do you remember what kind of encouraged you or inspired you to have a, a thing for martial arts? Like was it TV, movies, books? I played like, I played football when I was a kid in Australia. I played uh, Aussie Rules. And um, I did a bunch of different stuff. And there came a point when my mom put me in karate know what I don't think I don't think I was the the driving force I think I don't know I should ask her like why'd you do that but she I just remember I have this clear memory of her of holding her hand and I had this little white kimono on and this belt that she'd sort of tied for me and I walked in I was at the door of this dojo and there were all these dudes doing the thing you know and I was like terrified and sort of also in awe and slightly confused. And um, and it was Gojukai. I started with Gojukai and I later went on to Shobukai. And um, the Gojukai katas, the patterns are so beautiful, you know, and uh, especially the higher, especially yeah. the higher, uh, higher belt patterns. And I, I saw all these beautiful hand movements and, and I was, immediately I was sort of transfixed by the whole thing. I was really nervous and she walked me in and um, my sensei, Sensei Shields, his name was, and he was, he was the first uh, black belt that I trained under. And um, yeah, it was from that point, I just became obsessed. I was like, this is amazing. I started watching TV shows and, and movies. And, and uh, of course I found, uh, I found Bruce Lee and I was like, well, what is that? And who's he? And he became, he became a, um, a huge sort of fixation of mine to this day. I'm still fascinated with that guy. I think he's extraordinary. Yeah did in that time was really amazing and i just saw b water actually at sundance it's a really cool new documentary about it. Um, yeah but uh, then the karate kid came out as well i was like oh my god i am him i am but you know but like, you know and so it was sort of a, a dreamy time for me i used to like i had a little milk run like remember when we, and i was the same in the states where they used to drop bottles yeah. of milk on the doorstep and um, we'd run we were the runners, the kids, you get paid a little a couple of bucks and you just run your ass off, right? Dropping the milk, picking up the empty bottle. And I'd save my money and, and, um, and I'd buy these, I'd get mum to drive me down to the store and I'd buy these like karate magazines, black belt magazine, all that. And um, I'd like, there's little coupons and stuff that you could, you could order like the ninja shoes and like nunchucks right. and stuff. And, and I would save my money and I'd send away to the US to buy these. I just sit by the mailbox, just frothing, waiting for it to come. But yeah, man, it, it just became um, sort of took over everything. Really, it became it became a way of life for me very quickly, though I didn't realize it for many, many years. And I think that the other thing I was sort of thinking about this um, last night. I was trying to reflect on some of it a little bit to have something to talk about today. And um, I think that the discipline and the integrity that I learned in the martial arts and in the gyms that I was involved with uh, is something that I carried throughout my life and something that held me in, in good stead. You know? Yeah, for sure. And I think a lot of kids have a reflection of that, that they did martial arts when they were younger and, you know, it had a positive impact. And even people that didn't maybe do martial arts their entire life, it just hit them at an impactful time of their life, you know, where it set some habits and so like for you being a fan of Bruce Lee, who's always about, you know, blending the arts and 
finding what is useful, discarding what is not. What did that look like for you as you got older, you know, searching out other styles or, you know, what was kind of your mental perspective of martial arts as you got older, seeking out new things? I didn't have like a Zen philosophy on it back then, you know, I was just a kid and I was in it a number of the formative years. And um, I didn't realize what was sort of being imprinted on my, on my, the blueprint of my DNA as a person, you know, and I didn't realize how powerful or how kind of important it, it would it was or would be, but I just loved doing any of it. I wasn't like, okay, now I need to do, I wasn't like, I've got to go and find Jeet Kune Do, or I've got to go and study Wing Chun and get a wooden dummy and, and do all that so I can move my life. It sort of wasn't like that for me. I was, I was pretty scrappy when I was a kid. I had a lot to prove. I was always sort of like hanging out with older kids that were bigger and faster and tougher and and, you know, I was always the, the smaller dude trying to like show. And so I'd always puff my chest out and go for it. And, and, and I got my ass handed to me so many times because I picked fights with these gigantic guys and they just picked the shit out of me. And um, so I, I got in trouble a lot with, with the, the sensei's that I had in my life, um, you know, coming to class with black guys and stuff because, you know, what I now know, we train so we don't have to fight. And of course, if you have to fight, you finish the fight. But... I haven't had a fight in a long time, man, 20 years or something. But uh, it's, it was different back then. So, yeah, I think it was interwoven. And by the way, not for a minute would I say that martial arts fueled that, that thing. And if anything, it kind of capped it, you know. If anything, like, it gave me more moments of like, you know, fuck this guy. Like, you know, walk away moments than... than than I would have had otherwise, but um, I'm not yeah. sure if I answered your question, but. No, man, you did. I mean, because it's like, you weren't seeking out martial arts as like that, you know, I'm the student that needs to learn everything about all that there is and find only the best way. You know, you were just kind of in the moment participating and just enjoying what it had to offer. Um, you know, I talked to uh, Felicia O recently and she kind of had a little bit of a similar story. It was like, She's like, I just loved training. And then before you know it, I was training all the time and I've been doing this for several years to where sometimes I feel like it just kind of sneaks into our life to yeah. where you just kind of look back and before you know it, you're a martial arts guy and you didn't even realize it because um, it was just fun. It was the journey. Yeah, I think your question pertains more to me in my adult life. You know, um, in, my, in my 20s, I started to, I started to think about like, fighting systems you know what i mean and i started to think about like self-defense and like real stuff you know and i had some pretty hairy situations when i was younger you know i had some you know i had some guns pointed at me and i had a, a knife put to my throat at one stage and i had like i sort of came out of a bunch of situations that um i should never have been in but also that i probably shouldn't have made it out of so I'm, I've, I've, I've always been like thank you Mm -hmm. um, but as I got older, I started to evaluate my life as you do. And I started to think like, what's the, what's the best system? Like what's the system? And, um, after the birth of UFC, was that 93, 94, yeah. 93. 93, right? I started seeing that. I was like, what the fuck? Like that just blew my mind. And I wasn't ready for it. When I saw it, I wasn't like, <clears throat> oh yeah, that's, I was just like, what? And then, um, of course, I saw Mel Gibson do. He, he did a uh, he did a triangle on Gary yeah. Busey's head uh, in in one of those movies, and and that was that very dramatic in the brain. And, and I was like, "What is he doing? What is, what am I witnessing?" <clears throat> and at the time, I thought, "No, that can't be a real thing. That's not a thing. It's not a thing." Yeah. And then we started seeing more and more of it. And what I realized, like, my hands were always okay, but I was like, "I need to box. I need to box." And so I started boxing. I boxed for about six years, I guess. I knew I needed to get my hands better. And nothing will, nothing will dial your, your hands in like boxing, you know. And halfway through my boxing, I started really like watching um, jiu-jitsu. I started really starting to understand the, the critical importance of that system. But I had this mad reluctance. I don't know where it came from. I was just like, nah, I didn't really know anyone in jujitsu. I was like, each year that went by, it was a year further away from starting. Do you know what I mean? It was weird. And I just couldn't walk yeah. in 
him. And it wasn't until I got out here and in the first year of the show, Scotty was a purple belt then, um, Scott Kahn, who I, who I was yeah. working with, has become a really close friend. And he, he, uh, he was like, did you go to the jiu-jitsu? And I was like, nah, you know. And he was like, you're an asshole. You, you, you don't know anything. He's like, do jiu-jitsu. Stop being an asshole. And I was like, what's for this? And so after about a year, which was about nine years ago, I, I was like, all right, let me meet this dude, Egan, because I've read a lot about him. And I know who he is. And um, if I'm going to do it with anyone on this island, I'm going to do it with him. And um, Egan came out and there was some sort of mats up in this little gym we built at the stage. And he came out and um, I was like, man, this guy's a unit. Like, look at him. I can't believe I'm meeting Egan and knowing this is crazy. And we, I threw on a gi top and stuff and we just started doing some real basic stuff, man, like scissor sweeps and like, you know, little hip throws and stuff. And he got on. To, he got into my guard, and he taught me. He taught me just a double lapel choke, right? And when I finally got that choke, and I did it correctly, and there was very little effort, my grips were good. I had this moment where Egan Annoy was in my was in my choke, and I knew I knew he couldn't get out of it. And I knew if I tuck my head down, he could punch me as hard as he could for the next three seconds, but that in four seconds he'd be asleep. And it was a crazy revelatory moment. I was like, what is this thing in my hands? It's magic. You know, it's this magic. Magic. What is this magic? <laughs> and, uh, and that was the moment. And I sort of mucked around for the next sort of six months or so and had a few personal things I needed to sort out. But then about, it was about eight and a half years ago, I think. And I was like, I'm never going to stop doing this. I'm never looking back. And I, yeah. and I got mad for the house and I, that was it. Yeah. Was it. Well, I mean, and like, I understand what you're saying about a little apprehensive of getting into it because especially, you know, back in the day, whenever MMA and jujitsu were just so closely correlated, it was kind of like, if you were doing jujitsu, you were basically going to Valley Tudo class. Like, um, right. and it, and it kind of made a lot of people concerned where it's like, man, like, you know, I want to learn. I want to be tough, but like, I don't want to show up just for something to beat the brakes off of me. You know, like it just, it was one of those things because it was so new. It's kind of like you needed to find somebody um, to kind of, that you could trust just because it was, you could see how effective it was and, and that made it very dangerous. You know, that was just right. like, I don't want somebody to break my arm because I asked them, how do I learn an arm bar? And, and when you're not in the circles, like sometimes I know for me, like I showed up to gyms with like, an absolute belief that man these guys are going to try to beat me up and drag me out back in the alley you know when i was a young yeah. kid going to new places just you know your mind runs wild with your imagination and then when, oh, you, there, you, walk into a, when you walk into a jiu-jitsu gym i mean even a karate gym or a taekwondo gym they're kind of intense yeah 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 all the key up thing and like the you know, fan but you walk into a jiu-jitsu gym like that's a tough group of dudes man they're all yeah. like there's like you know, you walk in, you're like, oh my God, these guys are animals. Like, it's a, it's a different, they're a different breed. It's a different breed of martial right. arts. You fight, you get in there and you fight. It's a full, it's a proper full contact martial art. And I think that that's that. And it was like 20 years ago, I think it's much more accessible now. It's kind of, and this is a problem as well, because it's kind of becoming like yoga. I remember when yoga like blew up and every, like every street corner in Los Angeles, there was some dude with a top knot bun in his hair and like a, a fashionable beard and like, you know, flowery pants going, come on, ladies, come on. And, and it became this, it became like part of, it became popular, it became fun and popular and cool. And it was like, you do yoga, yeah, I do yoga. And um, I think jujitsu sort of become a little bit more like that, but it wasn't like that 20 years ago, man. When I thought about doing it, I was like, it was scary as fuck. And there, and there was there were a lot of Brazilians, <laughs> and they're gnarly dudes, man. Like all my buddies from Brazil now, they're the most amazing guys, man. They see me, they hug me, they kiss me. They were like, what is that? Like Hoist and Henzo and all these guys. They're the best, best dudes. But when you first meet them, it's like, oh, yeah, how <laughs> do you, man? Yeah, it's like you're not gonna punch me in the face randomly, right? Just because you can, like, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm. That's what I mean. Is that there's, and by the way, there's extraordinary jujitsu out there. And the wonderful thing about its proliferation, if that's the word, is that all these new players have come out of different countries. Like, I mean, look at like Craig Jones, you know, and, and, 
and, and Lachlan out there out of, out of my country, out of Australia, those like Craig might be the best on the planet right now. He's incredible. So it's kind of spread its tendrils and it's pulled some incredible people in, you know. Um, but it's also, there's some dudes out there that are sort of fronting with belts they shouldn't be wearing, teaching people like bad techniques and, and, and that's yeah. really, that's even more dangerous. Yeah, and, you know, but it, and it comes with the territory when something is expanding as quickly as this, you know, because I can remember whenever I started teaching jujitsu and I was just like a lonely little blue belt because I, you know, there's nobody else to train with, you know, it was just we had the only school and you travel to seminars for information and it was purely out of excitement. It was just like, look at what I learned, you know, let's do more of this. And I feel like that still goes on nowadays, but like you said, sometimes it gets a little misrepresented or people kind of jump to the belts a little bit quick and you know, maybe just don't have the, the time and rank that, you know, you're kind of looking for, but it comes with the territory. And, and I think the biggest thing is it really gets people thinking about jujitsu to where they get more critical and they start looking for more information, you know, where it's like, man, I've been doing this for a while. I feel like, you know, there's gotta be a missing piece. There's something else, which, you know, you hear a lot of guys say, you know, whenever black belts go train with Hickson, it's like starting over again. Cause he just brings in new ideas and, and new theories that they just hadn't been thinking about for the last 10 or 15 years or even longer um, Dude, that's private that i'm like saving my money for i still don't like i got a couple of friends i know crying a little bit i got i got jack and i got a few friends that are black belts under him and i'm just like i can't, that's the private that i'm like oh my god i can't wait, I can't wait it's like try. i gotta get better before i go and, and you know like it's probably not gonna matter but i gotta get better before i go it's one of those things that when you look at these higher level guys in the world and, and the people in a lot of smaller clubs, you know, that, uh, you know, don't have world-class experience or, you know, world champion instructors, you know, they can still do jujitsu and participate, but at least the awareness is increasing to where people are starting to look and seek out, you know, more knowledge and look to some of these senior belts, the guys that have been around since the beginning, which is such a unique situation of jujitsu because, the guys that were there when it started are, are still available for the most part. You know, right. like, I mean, the origins are still a phone call away, you know, um, and that, and that just, it's a very unique time for us to be a part of what's happening. And, and I, I, think, think, I just want to add to what I said before, like through this, this, this expansion of, of, of jujitsu around the world, the amazing thing is that there are lots of little clubs with dudes who are really, really good, with black belts who are really great running these little schools that open their doors and, and open their arms with a big smile. You know what I mean? It's not as like, it's not as like you can't, you're not part of this club anymore. It's much more accessible, which is amazing because I really believe that if everybody in the world did jujitsu, the world would be most amazing peaceful place and there would be no you know what i mean <clears throat> like the yeah. governments if they were all if they all trained jiu-jitsu with the politicians they'd be like ah oh, come on man. it's cool let's just go roll we'll work it out oh let's do the right thing for the planet let's stop fucking poisoning people and ripping everyone off i don't know i just think yeah. it's a very people who who train jiu-jitsu seriously um for a long period of time are 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 they're just, e they're easier people, I think, you know, yeah. I mean, there's something about them that's, um, and look, man, I mean, when you train jujitsu, you get bashed every day. You, 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 your, your, your whole thing is trying to stop someone from breaking your arm or, or putting you to sleep. Like, you know, it's not about how you look. I don't even think you get to look sexy doing jujitsu for like 10 years. You know what I mean? Like, I still look at my jujitsu when we film it. I'm like, dude, oh, why do I look so <laughs> Like it's kind of working, but it, you know, but uh, it's 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 hard and it's very humbling, and, and you can't any. It's it's a it's always been amazing to me because as a as a white and a blue belt, like I was desperate to get my belt. Yes, and I would never have told you that at blue belt. Hell no. Even at the first half of my purple belt, I wouldn't have admitted it. But I just I wanted that purple because I wanted to know I got past the curse. You know. Yeah. And I trained so hard and, you know, I got a bunch of stuff going on. I got six discs that are herniated and I got a whole bunch of stuff. But a couple of them I did to myself from like exploding at the wrong time and making bad decisions that were based in ego and just sort of like rushing my shots and, and, um, and, 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 and there's equal parts like as you're, 
as my if my ego comes in on the mat, it's like I just get destroyed. It's like it, it's a perfect balance, you know. The more ego I bring in, the harder I, I get destroyed, and, and the worse my experience is. So it, it's a leveler, man. And people that people that roll are, uh, the most part, I've always experienced them as, as really cool people and easy people. You know? Yeah, it's almost like it grounds your personality because you're you're in such a realistic scenario of it doesn't matter how angry you get frustrated you get or how much you want that moment if if you don't have the technical prowess the experience the timing and the calmness you know to execute like you missed it you're pinned in a bad position you get caught in a submission you know like and, and you have to cope with that and no matter what type of temper tantrum you want to throw nothing will save you except you know responding to the resistance yep and, you know it you seems probably. to just yeah, and I think that bleeds into people's lives off the mats too because, I mean, that's what most people are, that walk into a gym are really battling usually, you know, is they want to be something different. They want to feel something different. They just, you know, they're looking for some direction or purpose, you know, because they just feel lost and they don't have confidence or belief in themselves, self-image problems. There's all these things that come with them, which, of course, they're like, I just want to get in shape and learn some cool stuff. Um you know, but there's really some deep stuff in there that people are challenged by that that doing jujitsu and other martial arts as well, but jujitsu specifically, it just seems to give people an ability to come up with better coping mechanisms yep. for those struggles, you know, and almost a better perspective. I always kind of chalk it up to like, if I put you underneath full mount on day one and hold you down, you know, that's a very stressful, scary, intimidating moment of like, what do I do? People freak out. And then you fast forward two years later. And now they're comfortable in the same position. They don't freak out. You know, they've expanded. Hickson says, like, I mean, one of the, one, one of the many wonderful things he says that, you know, jiu-jitsu is about getting comfortable in the most uncomfortable and terrifying position you've ever been in, you know. And that's, well, man, that. and that's, that's life, right? I mean, totally. And, and I, I think a lot of people come, I think a lot of people come into jujitsu thinking they'll find one thing or for whatever their agenda is, you know, coming or into the martial arts, uh, like you said, to all martial arts, but specifically jujitsu, they come in and they're looking for one thing or they think they're looking for one thing, but they get a whole bunch of other stuff. They never thought, they never knew they would, they never even thought of, you know, I mean, the realizations are so profound. They're so, um, yeah, like you're saying, man, it's such a great and it's such a great analogy for life, jujitsu. It's such a great sort of it just runs parallel with everything. And if you there's also that moment where that you're talking about, like, you know, when you finally get comfortable in some somebody's in somebody's mouth and, and you just gently know how to stay safe and protect your neck and you're waiting for the, the, the half an inch they're gonna give you before you can sweep them off or get a leg or whatever it is. And if you sort of, if you look at, if you, if you can do that, life's kind of easy. <laughs> like, it's not easy, but it's like, you know, like marriage, kids, work relationships, you know, like speeding tickets, whatever, whatever your life consists of. It's like, it's all so much more manageable compared yeah. to having, some, you know, 220 pound black belt, insane gorilla lunatic sitting on your head. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, so when you look at your childhood, you know, when you were coming up rough and tumble, running with guys that are bigger, faster and doing some martial arts on the side, you know, I get the feeling that you're probably always challenging yourself or challenging others, you know, always kind of pushing the limits. Do you feel like when you look back at your youth, did martial arts give you a little bit more drive or do you feel like maybe it gave you more temperance to handle those circumstances you know, as you grew and got older? I definitely think both. I think I was more aware of the drive aspect before I was aware of the latter. You know, that sort of came in my later realizations when I was sort of older and my intelligence had formed and matured a little bit. But the drive that, you know, I mean, the way we trained back then, it was proper old school dojos, you know, with wooden floors and there were small matted areas. But we were doing like, I was six years old doing push up some of my knuckles on the wood, you know, with like instructors coming and sort of putting pressure between our shoulders and then doing crunches and then walking across our stomachs. And they, 
hit us with sticks if we were like acting out and <clears throat> sounds terrible. <laughs> Get in prison for that today. But it wasn't it wasn't like that. It was it was a discipline that as a male child who's who's you know a lot of like a lot of my generation's fathers weren't weren't available you know what i mean they weren't things changed uh, during the industrial revolution and and dads kind of became this ghost figure you know and boys need a dad full time like i got three sons man every one of them needs me all the time and, and especially the little ones you know and um i think that replaced that in a sense you know what i mean and yeah. I, i think that i think that, that the drive that came from like being forced into that discipline like multiple times a week you know it's just it's just beaten into you essentially and then it just that wheel starts running you know that wheel starts running and then when you do something of course that can you got to be careful like you don't want to be the sort of you know sometimes i have to pull myself up and realize like it's okay to be like not everything's like come on life or death so i've become you know as i get older i'm become learning the 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 importance of that sort of gentle balance as well you know um but to have that thing inside you to be able to harness that fire and push yourself forward and also i think another aspect is is your relationship with pain and i think pain is something that a lot of people are really scared of and it's and pain sucks you know i mean pain is it, it is what it is but through pain you're forced to do one of two things in my opinion you're either forced to retreat or you're forced to grow and if you if you're not given the opportunity to retreat <laughs> yeah there's a 220 pound black belt moment takes sitting on your chest then then you have to grow and what does growth look like in that moment? you know what sort of growth is required for the given circumstances and that's 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 sort of how i how i i see that it parallels with life and life you get to kind of like assess very quickly and and while staying safe and staying calm and then find a, find an avenue out of there you know and i think that that became a, a part of my life early on because i was introduced to pain um physical pain that would you could get over not injury pain like just temporary physical pain um but yeah it's it's wild reflecting all those years back man almost 40 years now but um yeah well i mean it's like when you look at the like you talked about the balance you know of uh, too much not enough it's just like when you're in a bad position when you're doing jiu jitsu if you get too aggressive and expend too much energy and pushing in the wrong directions you know you're taking a lot of action but you're not getting results versus the more you play you take calculated action and you get you know more results for that action and it's kind of that balance of like you can try to defend the position too much you know or you can defend it not enough just like when you're dealing with stuff in life in general where it's like you can overreact and lock it down too tight and be a little bit too forceful and you know and miss it or be a little too passive and complacent and it goes back to that balance you know which uh you know you kind of look at like all of the people that use analogies such as like surfing and skiing and you know they always talk about like oh you just got to find that zone that that balance that sweet spot and you know that's what you're trying to find in jiu jitsu but it just seems to bleed over into the rest of life right. so well you know and like you like yeah, managing pain yeah <clears throat> another thing i really like to do is rock climb I've, i've started climbing when i was probably about 20 when you're climbing there's something called your three foot world you know it's like right here and nothing else matters that three foot world is all that matters the foothold that you've you've just gotten it doesn't matter you lock it in if it's locked in you commit you go and your three foot world changes through each small movement you know and and um <clears throat> yeah you just made me think about that and it's the same thing it's the same thing in jiu jitsu it's like and you know the other thing the other thing that's amazing is watching women come in and start brand new like pure bred from like the first crispy white belt and watching how quickly because this happens in in rock climbing as well women are intrinsically better at rock climbing than men 
you see dudes like start to climb and they're burning out and their arms are all pumped and they're falling off and they can't. And these women are just like almost immediately it's perfect form. They're, they're straight arms, bent legs. They're using their leg muscles. They're like resting their hands and they're making their way up these rock faces. And if you watch women in a jujitsu gym, it's amazing because they don't, they're not born thinking I can, I can rely on boom. I can rely on brute strength. Right. So, you know, you see these women come in and, and it's amazing to watch their journeys. Cause as a dude, I went in and like, when you get on me, all my blah, you know, testosterone or whatever else is like kicks in and adrenaline. And I'm like, we're fighting, you know? And you do, you do fight in Jiu Jitsu. It's a, it's, it's a full, it's a full contact martial art, which is very different to a lot of the other ones, but there's so much more to it. And the moments of fight or scramble or explosion, really when you break it down and you've been around for a minute and you learn real Jiu Jitsu, you know, they're sort of minimal unless you're in competition, of course. And then it's just on, you know, and that's not something I do, but you know, if you're, and I'm not even talking about flow, gentle flow rolling. I'm just talking about normal rolling. Like you can only explode and go hard for a, a certain amount of time before you're gassing and you're pumped. Your movements aren't as effective. Your brain response time to your actual physical response time starts widening and all that sort of stuff. But I watch women come in and they're kind of freaked out at first and then they get it, they get it so quickly, man. And they watch the technique and they learn the technique and they get the technique and they use the technique. And it's like, right. whoa, these girls yeah. are getting so good so quick. It's crazy. And the dudes are still like, oh, clashing yeah. heads, breaking noses. And yeah. I've definitely had the same experience where it's like the guys kind of want to push through and run over and, and the girls are a little bit more adaptable about like move around, you know, right. like, you know, right. around the resistance instead of having to like stomp on the resistance and uh like you said mental conditioning of just from who knows where it comes from you know society chemical you know the nature nurture like you know who knows but this, but you notice the trends when you're training with people and especially the higher ranks like you become very similar to that where it's like calculated efficient movements to where i move just enough not too much not too little um, and man, I mean, honestly, like with anything in life, like that's usually the goal. It's like, you know, you got to do just enough because you can overdo it or underdo it. Um, yeah. if you were going to look at a situation outside of the martial arts, which you knew you were like, man, this moment has happened or I handled this moment because of martial arts in my life. Is there any that stand out that was like, yeah. maybe, you know, like an epiphany or I think especially jujitsu it comes into play in, in, in all, in all areas of my life. And, and there's moments when, um, just like on the map, there's moments when I'm like, I'm not focused on my breathing. My breathing needs to be a lot calmer. There's days when I'm rolling and I'm just like, dude, you're a mess. Like just slow down, slow your breath down. Like bring it back. What are you doing? What are you thinking about? Come back, empty your mind. And it's like in life, there's days when I wake up and I got a head like a slapped ass. I'm just like, and the kids are like, okay, let's uh, give dad some space today. I think it's, it's life on life's terms, you know what I mean? But for the most part, across the board, 97% of the time, I am much more well equipped to deal with life and all of its complexities and its difficulties and its different personalities and its agendas and everything else than, than, I, than I was even 10 years ago, you know? And by the way, as a person, I fail every day, you know what I mean? Every night I lay in bed and I go, okay, what can I do differently tomorrow, you know? As a, as a, as a husband, as a father, as a friend, as a brother, as a son, there's always adjustments that need to be made. You know, and I think that's the, um, <clears throat> that's the beauty of life. You know, I don't, I'm never, I'm never like, yeah, buddy, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's, there's, there's the martial arts in my life have had such a strong influence. And, and again, I come back to jujitsu because jujitsu is so profound. It's so profound. It's like, I've, I've gotten a bunch of people into it over the years and I've tried to get like a hundred times that many people. Into 
you know, and some people just don't, they don't give a fuck. And it's like, no, bro, I totally get it. Yeah. But I'm, yeah, I want people to get it. I want people to have it because of how much it's given me and because of how much I've seen it give so many other people. Man, that really makes so much sense because like the first part of it was, you know, failing as a person, you know, because everybody has seems to have this innate fear of failure. I mean, there's a whole fear of success discussion, but that's a whole different one. But, but, like, but the fear of failure, you know, of just making mistakes and like I didn't do perfect. And, you know, jujitsu, martial arts, you know, that type of training. I mean, you failed thousands, thousands, maybe even millions of times. And it becomes so common that you're just like not even bothered by it. You know, you become desensitized to it. And then, you know, when you talked about, you know, coping with what life gives you with different personality types and just different struggles. I mean, those are like the rolling partners on the mat. Sometimes it's a big, strong guy. Sometimes it's a little fast person. You know, sometimes it's a new person where you have to be the leader, help them along. And then sometimes you're just the nail and, and they're the hammer. <laughs> Dude, I love that. I love that hands -like quote, man. The hands -like quote, just so you guys know, is um, I'm going to paraphrase because I, I can never quote anyone correctly. But he was basically, he basically said, look, your job in the first few years of training jiu-jitsu is to be the nail because you're going to just get hammered and hammered and hammered but then at a certain point something changes and you become a hammer yeah. <laughs> and I was like oh my god it's amazing but the beauty of that is that when you become the hammer you're actually ready to be the hammer. you know you're ready to we hope we hope you know you're ready to use that responsibly and and you should have been teaching like long before then and all the rest of it you know there's actually this picture of grandmaster elio behind me here um that hoist gave me i had the old um the the, the federation just the federation picture you know with the lightning bolt and stuff in it in my garage here it faded out over the years and hoist was like he got another picture for you and he gave me this one it's actually signed by by his pops but what's oh, amazing man. i don't know if you can see the color of his belt do you see it yeah, it's blue, right? So this man was the, you know, he was the he and his brother, and they were the highest ranked uh, jiu-jitsu belts in, in the world, a tenth degree black, tenth degree red belt. And um, at a certain point in his life, he stopped wearing the red belt. He took it off, and he put this blue belt back on, and this kind of navy, this custom navy blue belt. And that's uh, that's actually what Grandmaster Hoist wears now too. And um, it's my understanding that the reason he, he went back to this is because it's that forever white belt mentality, you know, and, and, and Cabrinha uh, talks about that a lot. He's like, you got to, you always have to be a white belt, you know, be a white belt in your mind, no matter how good you get, no matter how, how many medals you get, no matter what you, you know, what riches you attain, no matter what, if you keep that white belt men mentality, you will, you will always win because yeah. it doesn't matter and there's always room for growth. And that's, that's the incredible thing. Like he died like well into his nineties, you know, and to the very end, he would say that like every day I'm still learning. I learn from those kids that come in and, I, and train with me. I mean, that's, that's beautiful. That's incredible. That's a reason to do something. Absolutely, man. I mean, just it's profound purpose of just, you know, always moving forward and growing, you know, which just as human beings, like we are just wired to, and you know, that's what we're wired to do. We are wired to grow and to, you know, contribute and help others, um, you know, kind of on a, on a real basic level, which kind of makes me go to the next question of, you know, a lot of people in martial arts, they seem to struggle with being humble and being like unconfident. Like they get the two confused where it's like extreme humility means I have no confidence in myself. Um, and I feel like there's a balance in there to where it's like you need to have confidence in who you are, what you know, what you're capable of, but you still want the humility, you know, of being a student and learning and progressing. Do you have a perspective on that of like how do you balance that? How do you find that happy medium, you know? Or um, yeah, man, I think it's uh, it's a fantastic question, and it's really um, it's a really important question, not just in this sort of discussion of, of the martial arts, um, but also in life. And, and, um, I once heard somebody say that humility or being humble, you know, is not thinking less of yourself, it's thinking of yourself less. 
And I heard that and I was like, that's amazing. And I know it's super simple, but it's like, I need super simple because I'm super complicated, right? So I heard that and I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. And so of course there's aspects that I think are critically important in life, like service, you know, and, and, and being there for other people and helping um, anyone whenever you can. And um, I think that stuff, and again, this isn't, this isn't directly martial arts related yet, but it's like, I think service is, is something that um, a lot of us think about and a lot of, but it's, but it's, um, it's really important. It's something that I try to do and don't do enough and wish I, I, I did more. There you go. Perfect example. This is maybe, maybe this conversation is good to rev me up into doing some more service. But anything that I can get out of self with, you know, because when I'm like thinking about myself and I used to be so self-absorbed, dude, like, oh God, I must have been so boring to be with. I just, as a young actor in Hollywood and just like, how do I look, how do I sound? It's like, fuck, it's so boring. But if you can get out of self, that I feel like is the beginning of kind of humility. And as far as like, as far as training in a martial art and, and, and having one teacher and or having one sensei, even if you have multiple teachers and, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, purist in the sense that I come from the traditional martial arts background and so when I tie my belt around my, my gi and I wipe my feet and I walk onto that mat it's like a, I don't want to get like I don't know it's it's a big deal for me you know and it's because it was made a big deal was, I was taught that it's a big deal when I was very very young and um this room is these matted areas that we we practice these arts in on together are kind of for me that it's a sacred place you know and so i think like i'm not i think there's respect and reverence are, are really important you know when you walk into a dojo like bow bow at the door and then walk in you know and and, and the reason we wipe our feet at the edges of the mat and not just to get the dust and dirt and grime from the soles of our feet, but it's also we wipe away our ego and we wipe away all of the, uh, the world's problems and we leave the world out there. We don't bring it in here. We don't bring it on these mats, you know, and um, that's really important and that affects all of our training. And um, you will, like I was, um, you will be forced into humility because the other option is humiliation, right? When you do a full contact martial art, and that's why I keep coming back to jujitsu, because all this other stuff, it's beautiful, you know what I mean? When you're doing air punches and beautiful kicks and you look amazing and people get photographs and you can, you know, but it's like when someone grabs your neck, something changes. All the like character defects jump to the surface and you're like, ah, fucking come back. And it's like when you can start to harness that process and stay calm during all that stuff. There's something really magical about it. And um, yeah, I don't know, I'm kind of waffling on that, but I, I don't know if I no, man, that is, no, that is what I consider profound knowledge, man. Cause like it's coming from a place of truth. It's like, that is exactly what it's like. And, and the way in which you look at the martial arts and your journey within it and what that belt means to you, like that's what defines its value. And by defining its value, you're going to measure its impact in the rest of your life. So, I mean, like, that's a very, very balanced perspective because if it didn't mean anything to you, one, you wouldn't dedicate your life to it, and two, you would not get out of it everything that does come with it. Like you said, there's people out there that they get the black belt, they achieve a few things, but, you know, there's some pieces in life that maybe they're, they're missing or struggling with, you know, wisdom or overall view of things, and it's like the intentionality of that on the front end of knowing what you're doing and what you're learning is a very serious, valid you know, thing. It's just uh, a lot of people, they shortchange it. And I really think it comes from embarrassment, like fear of embarrassment because yeah, it comes from fear it comes from like a lot of us have low self-esteem. It comes from, it comes from, you know, agendas, yeah. it comes from fear and fe fe I think fear, man. I think fear is the I, big one. I, mean, I that's agree because you think about how many people limit their thoughts or their true emotions or, or feelings about something because they're afraid of judgment or what people might say or what people might think. Totally. 
totally. And that's, that, that was my process. You know, I came into jujitsu and I was humiliated, humiliated, like time and time again by like little dudes, big dudes, fat dudes, skinny dudes, women, children. Like they just beat the shit out of me. And it was humiliating. But the reason it was humiliating, because this, this is why it was humiliating, was because of, uh, of, of my process at the time, you know, and this is going back like almost a decade and, and things have changed a lot for me. Like it's my opinion that you can recreate yourself every day. I really believe that. And I try to every day and sometimes I succeed and sometimes I fail and sometimes I regress, but that's a different conversation too. So I would be humiliated because this hadn't changed, you know, and there was still so much ego coming onto the mat with me. And once that started to shift, and it moves from humiliation to being humbled. That was, that was so liberating. It was such a liberating experience because those guys are still that much better than me. Like I'm never going to beat Egan, but you know what I mean? There was in the early days, I never, and, and by the way, I never was like, can I beat this dude? It's, it's, that, it's, you know, I, that's, that's, you should never ever think that about the man or woman that you're training uh, under. But the other guys, I wanted to like, when can I run this blue belt a little bit? Or when can, why does this white belt keep him? And when the, when the humility kind of kicked in and I just started taking it and being like, wow, okay, and being humble, and, and, and I was humbled by it, I wasn't embarrassed anymore. I was, it just left me quiet and pensive and thoughtful. And it was, I wasn't like, it wasn't upsetting. <laughs> like it was in the very beginning and what's amazing is the transformation from sort of being humbled by something turns into being stoked by something like one of my dudes i got a, i got a group of dudes here these amazing guys most of them are black belts they come over they train in my house in my garage you know and we can you know i'm never far from my kids it's why i built a gym at my house i'm never you know i can control who comes and who doesn't and they're all really really good we, we're, we're all busy they run in we train hard for an hour and you know and we, we go about our lives but they come in and like i know their games I, I they can't trick me anymore we like we, we we go hard too like you know and um it's sometimes one of them will get something and i'm like dude that was dark like how did you do that was amazing and then we sit down and we break it apart and we give everything to each other and it becomes like the collaboration it becomes like uh, it's it's like it's so much more they're my family now you know what i mean and everything we have there are no secrets we share everything with each other and egan my waffle am i just rambling bullshit no no, no man dude you're good <laughs> <laughs> I, do that, man. I just bullshit on egan egan and Noy is um He's so incredible. I mean, he, I, I spoke to him yesterday. I think he might be talking to him at some stage, which is, which is amazing. But he, he'll tell you his journey. He came up and he was under a few different senseis, a few different professors when he came up. And, and I, I don't know if that's got anything to do with it, but he has this real sort of egalitarian, like open-minded approach to training. And like, there's a lot of schools that you walk in and they're like, if you train here, if we ever hear you train anywhere else, you're done. You're done. You're, and God bless him. Like that's, that's, that's how they do it. Egan's the opposite of that. He's like, go and train with everyone, man. He's like, I want you all to train with everyone, whoever you just be safe, just make good choices, go train, come back, show me all the secrets yeah. <laughs> and you know, let's break it, let's break, break it all down. And so my whole jujitsu journey has been going out into the world and getting stuff and bringing it back. And, He's like, and, and just, and, and mixing it up and playing with it. And so, yeah, no one. And the other thing is that sort of embarrassed humiliation that can happen really, really early on. I think anyone, any sort of higher belt, any colored belt, if they're seeing that happen in the gym, they, they should be like, they should take that person aside and, and, and say or do whatever needs to be said or done to, ensure that person has a better experience, you know, because it's unnecessary yeah. and they did it for me and I didn't listen. I needed to eat more shit sandwiches and have a hard time for longer. And, yeah. uh, and I did. And, um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it starts like that for a lot of people. But it well, and I think that 
you know, what you're talking about, it was difficult in the beginning and then it changes. People misunderstand growth for punishment in the beginning. And I think it's like that in everything. I mean, martial arts specifically, where you're like, gosh, I'm just getting punished, you know, and people, they see me almost like people are actually paying attention to you, you know, when they're really not. But, you know, they, but they misunderstand growth for punishment and it takes time and, and mentorship, which goes back to what you had mentioned earlier, which I really loved was, you know, teachers and a sensei, you know, like we have lots of teachers, but a lot of us kind of have a sensei that's kind of, you know, one of our more primary influencers, especially in the martial arts world. I mean, a lot of people, but there's usually one that's kind of your, your, your main influencer that helps you balance all this information. And, and, you know, people like that in your life are the ones that help you understand that you're not failing. You're not being punished. You're not being humiliated. You're growing. And, and yeah. it's trying to help people see that faster. And I think that goes back to your reference of like, if everybody in the world did jujitsu, everything would be so much better because that is primarily what I think everybody would absorb as they would stop the measurement against each other so aggressively. And it would just turn into like this growth as a unit, as a team. Cause I mean, when you're in a jujitsu gym, like it gets competitive, like you're trying to get each other, but it's coming from such a different place than when you're trying to like, beat somebody, you know, like I want to show them or humiliate them versus no, I just want to give them my best. And I feel like that's the the transition. You see a lot of higher level athletes hit to where like they appreciate the opponents and the guys showing up because they are in there to test themselves and no longer test the other person. You know, it becomes internal. You know, it's funny. I have a thumb drive in there somewhere with a, I think it's I think it's like an hour and forty minutes or something that Cabrinha and Egan ro- like flow rolled together. This is eight years ago, maybe. Um, they were just it was just just move for move, and like they were both laughing the whole time and having the best time. And when I watched it back then, I was like, not that interesting. I love both those men. They're incredible men. They're both like mentors of mine, especially Egan. But I was like, okay, what are they? And now when I watch it today, it's like, that's one of the greatest things I've ever seen. It's extraordinary, you know? Because like you said back then, I just want, I wanted to win. I, I wanted to win all the time. I wanted, um, you know, I, w- I wanted to know that what I was doing was working, you know? Validation. Yeah. Validation. Welcome to, True. Welcome to everybody on the planet. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's like everybody wants some degree of validation or relevance. And I think they get the two confused. You know, we're like, you know, the, and it's truth. Validation, I feel, is something much different than relevance. Um, and especially like being in the public eye, I'm sure if anybody understands that more than anyone, it's you. Um, is because people they get confused once again I, I think it goes back to an educational process on almost all of it is i need to understand the difference between you know being relevant just because i'm trying to choke everybody and i get that i become that person in the gym always goes hard always trying to choke everyone versus you know seeking some validation which over time stops being the measurement against the people you're rolling with and it, and it starts being the pursuit of information you know the pursuit of excellence Knowing right. you will never be perfect or probably the absolute best in the world, but you pursue it every day like it's almost at your fingertips. Right. You know? And I think that, all, that also boils another question down, and that is that it's like, I think it's really important on this journey in this martial art to continually ask yourself, check in with yourself and ask yourself, like, what do I want? What do I want? And especially if you walk into a, into, into a jiu-jitsu gym for the first time, if you can, sometimes it's hard to answer that question. Like, what do I want? What do you want? What, what, and, and, and this is a Hickson question too. He's like, um, when I, I was training with Huron and Hannah in, in, in his garage and Huron was like, why do you do jujitsu? And I was like, what? I was a purple belt. Like I was almost a brown belt then. And I was like, what do you mean, dude? It's my everything. And he's like, no, why do you do jujitsu? I was like, I love it. He's like, no. I didn't ask you how you feel about it. I asked you why you do jujitsu. Dude, no, fuck, I couldn't answer him, man. I was like, I, yeah. I couldn't answer him. And he was like, you know what? When you figure it out, let me know. And I did. Like two weeks later, 
I thought about it every day. And like two weeks later, I hit him up. I was like, yo, you got a minute? He's like, yeah. I was like, here on this is why I do jujitsu. And blah, 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 blah. And it doesn't matter what the answer is. But I told him my answer. He's like, beautiful. Now you know why you do jujitsu. And it was, it was a pivotal moment for me because it made me stop and evaluate. Because look at this, man. Like, I'm like headed towards nine years deep in this thing. Like, in another year, year and a half, I could have done a med. I could be a surgeon. I could be like it's a yeah. lot of time to commit to something, man. Yeah. It's a lot of, and commit to like every day, and like it's it's a lot of time, and there's a lot of injuries. You're gonna get hurt, man. You're gonna get hurt. I've been really hurt. I've, you know, I've been hurt doing other dumb stuff as well. But you get hurt, and um, it's a lot of commitment, and 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 it's good for me. For me, anyway, it was good to be able to answer that question. Like, why do I do this? Why do I? Why did I build this? Why do I? Why do I push this envelope constantly, constantly, constantly? And uh, I think in the beginning, it's it's different. In the beginning, yeah. a lot of people, I think it's like I was bullied. I don't want to get bullied anymore. Fuck that. I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, I've been beaten up this many. There's this one guy that always, or it's like I want more confidence, like you said. Or like chicks might dig me more if I if I have a black belt. I might get laid. I, I don't know. Like it doesn't it yeah. doesn't matter. It's like it doesn't yeah. matter what gets you into the gym. The most important thing is that you get into the gym, and that once you're in the gym, you stay. No matter how humiliating it is, no matter how painful it is, no matter what, you stay because you got to stay. You got to stay, man. Yeah, I mean, and just because everything starts shallow, where it's like. You come in to get in shape, learn some moves, want to be a fighter. And then you start connecting the dots of like where it's really coming from. You know, like you just keep pulling layers back. And that's where these experienced lifers, like they know that. And and that question is probably the most important question because of what it causes. Like you said, it's not about the answer. It causes that introspection. And, And that's what people are spending so little time doing a lot of times is understanding what's going on on the inside. Where is this truly coming from? You know, like, what is my intention with, with doing this martial art? What do I want out of it? What do I want out of life? Like, just all these questions that you wouldn't think you would have rolling around with guys and jujitsu geese trying to choke each other. But, like, it's the moment between moments. Like, when you're out there training and rolling, your brain just it disengages from, like, past and future. And you just live in that moment for a short time. And then, like, you just get clarity, uh, you know, like emotional, physical, spiritual clarity almost. Like, it's a unique thing. That no, it is, happen. man. It's a, there's very few things that, that I've found in my life that are, um, that shut everything else out. You know, it's like, when, I, when I'm training jujitsu, I can walk into the gym with, I mean, someone could have died. Right, but it's gone. It's gone. When I'm training, it's gone. It's pure. It's a pure empty mind. And in that sense, it's like it's wild how meditative it is. And that's like not 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 necessarily. Actually, not. Maybe it was like that in the beginning too. It's it's incredible, man. It just like clears my head. And when I'm done, I'm like, oh, I feel so good. You know, I'm like, yeah. I've, I've had a great workout. I've got like another black eye, but that'll be okay. I got to drain this ear again. And I think I'm pretty sure this is broken, but I feel fantastic. And I'm not thinking about anything. And I'm pretty sure I had all these problems that I that I walked in here with, but they're all gone. And yeah. and that's one of the reasons I like climbing. You know, I love climbing um, because it it, it it has the same effect on my brain. And um, diving as well. I love diving. Diving sort of does. Yeah. The same. You know, it, you know, you talk about all these things that causes that moment of escape especially like diving just because you know the the sensory deprivation that just naturally happens like i really feel like that that resonates with me because that's almost what it's like doing jujitsu is like a little bit of sensory deprivation of everything else i mean like in the moment you're paying attention you're engaged and like you said it's probably always been that way but maybe we weren't as aware of it in the beginning of how much it was helping us kind of you know, be in the moment and everything else falls away. But later on, you do get very aware of it. But yeah, when you said diving, that really hit me because it's like, yeah, I mean, that's true because everything else is just not impacting you as much. Um, and it's almost like the quiet in the chaos. Dude, it's amazing. And I mean, philosophically speaking, like if you look at life, 
like 10,000 years ago, I, I read something that once that we're, we, we as a species are only sort of like 5% different than we were back then. Like we got less hair and we got like, ultimately we're the same creature. And 10,000 years ago, we ran the earth. Like we woke up in the morning, we collected some rainwater, we were always watching for predators and we went out and we hunted and we were, if you weren't, there was, there was no, I can only imagine, fuck, what do I know? There was no like the past and the future. It's like the moment was so precious because you could get, I don't know, a saber toothed tiger could come and like fuck you up or something. Yeah. Like, you know, you've got to be on that. And this morning I'm teaching my 11 year old to, to, to spear fish at the moment. And we were, uh, we were at the front here and there's this little cabin I like to go and hang out in. And there's all these fish down there. And, and um, I was just free diving and I'm just sitting underwater on these rocks and I got a bit of camo gear on. So I look like a rock. I probably look like an idiot to the fish. They're like, look at this dude. But I'm just sitting there holding my breath. I'm super calm because I did a breathe up first. I'm full of oxygen. I'm just sitting there with, with my spear and I'm just watching these fish and I'm just waiting and nothing else existed in that moment. And I know this isn't a spear fishing tutorial and if it was, you shouldn't be talking to me because I'm not that good at it. But it, it, it's so incredible. Those moments in life are so important for me because we live in this insane world of like instant gratification. The, 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 the desperate sort of desire for immediacy in everything is wild. You know, that's why I don't, I don't do social media. I don't do, my kids don't have cell phones. They don't, you know, we're trying to like hold all that stuff back and hold them back from gaming and hold, because it's like, the moments are so precious and jujitsu gives me my moments back. You know what I mean? And, and when I have my moments and I can be present in my moments, you're going to have a really hard time putting me to sleep or breaking my arm because I'm present, you know, and I'm calm. Um, and uh, if I'm not, if I'm thinking about, yesterday or tomorrow you know if i'm thinking about how you got to where you are or like what's going to happen next like i'm in so much trouble and that's i think that's one of the great that's one of the things that really attracted me to it and one of the things that i sort of had some sort of co cognitive uh grasp on early on i was like oh my god i feel so present when i'm doing this thing it hurts my neck hurts my this hurts and i did something down there but oh my god i'm so present so, uh, yeah, man, it's pretty special stuff. It's yeah, special. That, I think that really sums it up extremely well. Um, because, man, that's the whole thing that, that we're kind of looking at exploring is what happens with the depth of the journey as people get into martial arts. They start, you know, becoming more physical and, and being in the moment and just shifting priorities. Because, like you said, the, the world's overrun with, with influence and things that we think that matters versus stuff that doesn't matter. And, and it's difficult to navigate. And there's a lot of people that don't have really good skills or experience to navigate it very well. And I think that's kind of the, the goal of a lot of martial artists in the world is they're trying to help people find those skills through martial arts. Cause there's other ways to find it. Like you said, you know, climbing and diving. And there's a lot of things that can help people find their balance in life. But I just know for me, it's been martial arts and, from talking to you, you know, it, it seems that it's been a major influence or an impact for you. And, and I can really hear the lessons resonate that, that people are going to connect with because they're going to understand exactly what you're talking about because everybody's fighting those, those same battles, you know, day yeah. in and day out. So, yeah, that was awesome, man. I really appreciate right that. Right on. Uh, and I mean, okay. one, one thing I didn't say is, and I think this is really important, like I'm not a competitor and um, I stress that because sports jiu-jitsu is huge. You know, and a lot of people, a lot of people come into jiu-jitsu because they want to, they want to compete and they want to win. And that's, that's awesome, man. And some of my close friends are that person, you know, and um, I can't really speak to the competition aspect so much just because I, I don't do it, but it doesn't, you know, and, and, and in that world of like, placing and medals and all that there is the best you know but like in anything the best only lasts for so long until the next better guy is around you know and we all know that there's always going to be someone better eventually you know um but um 
we're all on such different paths, you know, but we walk the road together. And I think that that's something that took me a while to get my head around. I was like, oh, I've got to get as good as like, dude, and I can't be, and I can't wait till I'm a little bit better than the dude here because he's always with it. And it's like the, the moment that I was, I was able to sort of let all that go and go, no, none of that fucking matters, man. Oh, this is my path. It doesn't matter. This is my belt. This is my kimono and this is my game. Like once I found that, which took me, it took me probably five years to get there. But once I got there, that was super liberating. Like I was like, oh, oh, I'm going to do this forever now. I'm going to train forever. Oh, I need to change the way I train. I need to, I can't train the way I've been training until I'm an old man because I'll be dead in, in 15 years. So all that, that was a really big shift that happened for me. So, I mean, if anybody's like white belts or blue belts or, you know, that are, that are experiencing that, just don't trip and, and, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to settle in, you know, it's going to settle in because it does. And when it does, it's beautiful, man, because it kind of sets you free and you don't care anymore. You, you forget what comes around your waist. You forget how many stripes are on it. It doesn't matter. It's kind of like that you find yourself almost, you know, like, like you finally know who you are. Like, like yeah. you kind of figure out like what, what you're supposed to do. You know, it's almost like your purpose a little bit. Like it helps you define it better. You know, maybe not find the purpose, but you define who you are better and, and just understanding where you stand, like kind of in the world or the universe. Like, I mean, it's, I mean, it's a, a very, like you said, a very transcendent type of situation that it can occur that can go as deep as anybody wants to go. But right, right, right. Uh, but, you know, on the lighter note, it's fun, it's training, you know, we get to choke each other, we tackle each other, and, and you make some of the best friends in the world, and, uh, you know, and, and you're having a good time. Um, so on a lighter note, like, you got anything cooked up, anything coming up that you're excited about, anything you'd like to, to mention before we head out? No. Easy. Literally, no, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad to be um... – look, I just came off this show for 10 years, which is extraordinary, like, nothing goes for 10 years anymore and um i've been feeling a lot of gratitude i've been really kind of um catching those quiet moments in this quarantine this very odd quarantine period that we're all experiencing and i've been trying to sort of just get quiet and and do gratitude lists and and it keeps coming up i'm so grateful for the experience i just had um because it's really rare man it's rare for an actor to make a living period but to have an experience like this is, is nuts and on the other side of that i've worked pretty hard for the last 10 years uh and uh i'm really exper I'm, the experience of, of of sleeping for like eight hours a night incredible man. it's like not having to get up at five every morning or whatever it's 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 been a big deal and getting all this time with my kids and, uh, and uh, I really miss training. I really, really, really miss training jujitsu. Um, but I've got a great gym here and, and I work out and, and I, I've been, you know, just trying to mind, body, spirit, the, the deal. And, and, uh, and um, yeah, who knows, man, I'm kind of just trying to hand it out. As far as career stuff goes, I'm trying to just hand it over and I'm not, I don't know. I don't even know what I want to do. I mean, I guess I want to keep acting. I don't know if I'm, I, I'm so in a sort of, I don't know. We'll see, man. We'll see what comes up. We'll see. For fun like we'll see. Maybe I'll start writing again if I get inspired. I'm just, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just in a quiet period and I want my yeah. jits. Man, I want my jits back. That's it, man. It's all about rolling. Um, okay, last. I want to have a little bit of fun. I came up with right. a fun. So you've been playing Cop for 10 years, you had to have learned many lines and cool stuff. So I wanted to play, is this an acronym for cop stuff or is this an acronym for Dungeons and Dragons? All right. Okay. So I'm going to give you the three letters that make up the acronym and then right. you just use cop D&D. &D. Okay. okay. Is there a passing grade on this? Do what? Oh, is there's a passing grade? No, wait a minute. I don't know. I'll get a file, but it's okay. No, no, no passing grade because uh, either way, I think everybody will understand because these were hard. Like I, I researched and I was like, man, this is, uh, this is tough. Okay, first one, um, NPC. Sure, NPC. I don't think it's a cop term, NPC, but I'm not a great Dungeons and Dragons. The kids like it, NPC. I'm going to say Dungeons and Dragons. Bingo, yeah. It stands for one-player character. Good job. Okay, yes. 
Okay, okay, you're good, you're good. Okay, next one. ARV. ARV. I think it's a cop. I think it's a cop. cop? Yes, armed response vehicle. Man, okay. dude, you're good. Oh, I should be sure about too. that. I'm not playing a couple of ten years. All right, good. Oh, yeah. Just like yeah, 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 yeah. Flipping my way through this. Okay, last one. LFA. LFA. I've never heard it before, so I'm going to say D and D. Oh, it was a cop term. Larceny from automobile. Uh, see if I'd have stolen I stolen more shit out of cars, I would have known. Oh, all that. Uh, yeah. Well, I just wanted to have some fun. I appreciate the time today. Um, it was very insightful, man. Like I just listened to you talk martial arts and everything. Just really, man, it, it was really awesome because you can tell it means a lot to you and it's influenced your life. And and that's kind of our whole purpose right now is trying to let people hear some messages of some encouragement, and how it can help, and. You know, and, and also with people within the industry, they're, they're facing a very unique, challenging time right now with schools and, you know, what they're going to do, you know, financially and health wise. Just there's a lot of things going on. And I think this is going to give people a lot of encouragement. Is there anything you'd like to close with? Yeah, man, I think the last thing I'd like to say, um, thanks for having me on, by the way. I really appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun um, is, you know, if you got kids. Get them into karate or taekwondo, and, and and just see see what happens. That that's I would I would love to sort of hear how it goes. Man, I appreciate it. I hope you guys have a great day, and and I'll definitely be staying in touch. All right, brother. Thank you so much, man.